قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمع One companion, one morning he woke up and he said لأخدمن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يومي هذا Today I'm going to serve the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم all day long He said I woke up and I went to the masjid and I said to the people where is the messenger of Allah They said he's left out I went out in the streets of Medina searching for him صلى الله عليه وسلم I found him that he entered into a garden around which there was a wall I asked for permission and I went in and I met him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst he was sitting on the edge of a wall he was sitting on the edge of a wall and he had raised his lower garments and his blessed legs and feet were dangling inside the wall and I met him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then I said لَأَكُونَنَّ بَوَّابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَوْمِ هَذَا Today, I'm going to be the doorman of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he went and he stood at the door of that garden all day long. He said the door was knocked. I said, who is it? And the answer was Abu Bakr. I said, hang on until I ask the Prophet. I said, Ya Rasulallah, Abu Bakr is asking for permission. The Prophet said, اِذِنْ لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ allow him to come in and give give him glad tidings that he will go to paradise Sayyidina Abu Bakr came and he sat beside the Prophet on the wall he raised his lower garments and he dangled his feet and legs in the wall he said the door was knocked again I said who is it he said I'm Umar I said hang on until I ask the Prophet he asked the Prophet the Prophet said إِذِنْ لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ allow him to come and give him glad tidings of paradise he said Sayyidina Umar came and sat beside Sayyidina Abu Bakr and he did the same on the edge of the wall. Then the door was knocked again and I hoped it was my brother who was catching me up at home. When I opened it, it was Usman. I said, hang on. The Prophet said, اِذِنْ لَهُ وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ عَلَى مُصِيبَةٍ يُبْتَلَى أو كما قال. He said, allow him to come in and give him glad tidings of paradise, but upon a tribulation that will strike him. Sayyidina Usman came and there was no space on this side of the wall. So he sat on the opposite side of the wall and he did the same. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, one of the great tabi'een, he said, when I heard this hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting, besides him is Abu Bakr, besides him is Umar, and opposite to them is Usman, I interpreted this, the graves of all four. Sayyidina Rasulullah is buried, besides him is Abu Bakr and Umar, and opposite to them in the baqi is Sayyidina Usman. Opposite to them, in the Baqi' is Sayyidina Usman. So this companion who narrates this hadith, he said, all day long I stayed in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, all of us have been sitting in the company of the remembrance of the beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what we have seen, I was surprised it came to an end. Sidi Mansur has done a beautiful job. I've watched this before, but Every time it was just progressing and going along, I thought it was never going to end. You see how beautiful that journey was? These 20 children who went, Alhamdulillah, with the donations of so many of you, the City of Knowledge Academy commissioned and sponsored every one of these children to go on Umrah. They weren't charged a single penny, them nor their parents. They were picked up from Birmingham, to Heathrow, to Abu Dhabi, to Jeddah, to Mecca, to Medina, back to Jeddah, to Abu Dhabi, to London, to Birmingham, to their parents. And they weren't charged anything. Why? To transform lives, to bring reality into these young hearts, to bring reality into these young hearts. Alhamdulillah, we're living in the West, we're living in luxury, Alhamdulillah, Allah has bestowed us with so much wealth. 
But how many of our young ones have visited the Kaaba al-Musharrafah? How many of our young ones have visited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How many of our young ones, like these young ones, have shed tears for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You saw them. And I'm telling you, when these young boys marched in Makkah al mukarramah and Madinah al munawwarah people came to me and said, Makkah and Medina has never seen this in history. They said Makkah and Medina has never seen this in history. A group of young lads marching through the streets of Makkah making tawaf all together, all alone. People said to me, where are their parents? Where are their guardians? How have you bought them? Are you not scared or frightened something will happen to them? I said they've come to visit the generous one and he will be generous to them. He will be generous to them. The scholars of Makkah were generous to them. The scholars of Medina were generous to them. We visited the faqih of Makkah, Sayyid Umar al-Jilani in his home. We visited the house of the great Imam and the muhaddis of the Haramain al-Sharifain, Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi rahmatullah alayhi in Makkah. We visited Habib Zain bin Sumayd, the great Shafi'i Faqih and Arif Billah in Medina, Shaykh Muhammad al Matrahji in Medina, the great Muhaddis of Medina al Munawwara, Shaykh Ibrahim Mullah Khatir, and many others. And above all, these young boys sat in Medina al Munawwara and they shed tears for the Prophet. These are boys from your streets. As he said at the beginning, Adam Rock, Lozal, Small Heath. This is what Makkah and Medina can do, transform lives. This is what we need to be doing. And it's these projects that we are calling out to, to all of you to support. These projects that are running from the peak of Scotland to the depth of Devon and across Europe. These projects need to be supported by all of you. The masjids in this country are built. The masjids, alhamdulillah, people are generously still giving to the masjids. But now it's time to give to people who will build uh, individuals who will come into the masjids and bring life to the masjids. Masjids, when they stand alone, they are empty buildings. They are houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What brings beauty into a masjid is a filled masjid. And what brings even more beauty into a masjid is a masjid filled with young people, masjid filled with teenagers, masjid filled with people who are eager for their religion. I tell you a story of a young boy. We told our children in the city of Knowledge Academy to write poems for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And believe me, till date, this is the best poem I have ever heard. He said to the teacher, if you ask me to write a poem for Sayyiduna Muhammad, then I will give you a piece of paper filled with my tears and that will be my poem. My paper will be filled not with ink, but with my tears. Love is precious. Love is very precious. Love is a jewel that's not granted to everyone. Hearts have become stiff. They've become They've become like rocks and even more stiff. But these hearts can be penetrated, they can be broken into only through the love of Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how will that happen? That will happen once all of you start to support, help and assist institutions like this to do projects like this. Since we took this uh, trip, parents have come to me and said, what's happened to my child? My child wakes me up for Fajr. One of the parents, he said to me, he came into the office and he said, my, my child at Fajr time, he causes mayhem in the house. He says, dad, not at home in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the masjid. These are projects that you need to be aware of. These are projects that you need to wake up to the reality of. These are projects that you need to give into so that they bring fruits and blossoming flowers into this community. I have parents come to me, mothers, fathers, grandparents come in tears and say, help us. Our children have gone astray. They've gone away from the religion. I say to them, what's happened to the masjids that you gave to for the past 20, 30, 40 years? Why are they not providing for your children? Why are your children uh, made to turn away from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I know of this. I know of people who said to me, 
For eight years, I did not turn to the house of Allah. Why? Because I was dismissed from the house of Allah. Why are our children being dismissed and expelled and turned away from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need a community that stands up for these young ones. We built masjids in this country, but now it's time to bring, build young men and young women who stand up for the values of Islam, who stand up for the realities of Islam, who stand up with the characteristics of Sayyiduna Muhammad within them and walk in these streets as ambassadors for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they walk in this street, the non-Muslims of this land can see the love of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam glowing in their faces, as Shaykh Yahya said, glowing in their faces that will take them into the museums of love in their heart and take them through the galleries of Muhammadan love and find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam people it's time that we wake up to a reality and that reality is that we have to give up everything for this religion we have to give up everything for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when we call out to you and ask you to sponsor and support these projects across the countries we need people who will give up everything say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praised Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq and he said ما نفعني مال كما نفعني مال أبي بكر no wealth ever benefited me the way the wealth of Abu Bakr benefited me Sayyiduna Abu Bakr began to cry he cried you know Sayyiduna Abu Bakr wasn't a little boy he was a 60 year old man he was a 60 year old man he wasn't a man who lived a life of luxury. He was a man who was expelled from Makkah. He was a man who had to leave his businesses in Makkah and turn to Medina, turn away from them. He was a man whose family was tortured. He's a ma he was a man who was insulted in Makkah al-Mukarramah, abused and beaten. He was a man who went through a tough life. When the Prophet praised him and said, no wealth benefited me the way the wealth of Abu Bakr benefited me. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr began to cry and he said, Ya Rasulallah, wahal ana wa mali illa laka? And tell me, Messenger of Allah, am I and my wealth but for you? This is what we need. People whose minds become a manifestation of this line that everything that we have is for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know what the greatest thing that you have beyond the wealth that Allah has given? Beyond the wealth that Allah has given all of us, the greatest thing that we have is our children. And if we don't impart in our children love of Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no way we will be able to show our faces to him on the day of judgment Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If our children are not with us on the day of judgment, enjoying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's company, then we've got questions to ask ourselves. These children, they enjoyed their trip. They loved their trip. Allah poured into their hearts love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Haramain al Sharifain. We want you all to take messages away from today. And those messages are what are we giving our young ones? Don't look around the country and say the masjids are built. Look around the country and say, where are the people to fill these masjids? Don't look around this country and see beautiful masjids. Look around this country and find faces and people who will fill those masjids. Our masjids are empty of young people. Why? We have all got to answer for that. And as Sheikh Ibrahim Asiyafa, he says, he says, we've become a slacking generation whose forefathers built masjids and we're sitting on chairs in comfort and we feel that we've got nothing to do for this religion. This religion needs to progress and it will only progress through all of us. And we need to stand up for that. We need to stand up for that. I hope that all of you enjoyed this documentary. And I hope that once it's put onto YouTube, that you will send it out to your friends, your young ones, and many others will be inspired
to direct their children towards the Haramain al Sharifain. One of the problems that we have in our families is children are not taught about the Prophet. Why in our families and in our homes screens are in every corner of our house? People have plasma screens in their bedrooms. People's children have screens in their bedrooms. Watching what? Filth. And then we come in, crying to the Imam and the Shaykh, my child's not listening, my girl's run away. What can we do if you haven't placed the Prophet in your homes? It's time that we migrate. Not migrate from country to country, migrate from the state that we're in to the Prophet And if we make that migration, our children will migrate with us and they'll become like the children of the Sahaba.